Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Uh, I've been out for a couple of weeks. I've had COVID. I uh, appreciate all the prayers, and, and we thank you for those. And uh, we have survived it. Although, not very well, but I have survived it. God's good all the time. He got us through it, me and Victoria both. And we uh, thank you again for the prayers. Um, but uh, I want to tell you today, Happy Independence Day. And I don't know if you know it or not, uh, but about 25,000 people perished so you could have an Independence Day uh, from the tyranny of taxation without representation and all the other tyranny that was going on uh, when the United States become the United States. So, uh, you know, if you know a, a soldier, you probably ought to thank him. And we definitely should never, ever forget the ultimate sacrifice that those 25,000 people that died uh, to make this nation uh, have given. They have paid the ultimate price. It did cost blood to make us free. We should ever, never, ever allow our liberty to be in question. Ever. If someone's taking your liberty, what are we saying to those 25,000 souls that paid the price? You died in vain. We should always be careful uh, to protect the liberties that we have here in the United States. I promise you they don't have them in other places and other countries around the world. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't protest, but I do support the right of those to protest. Uh, things that they don't agree with, because they would not have that right if they were in China or Russia they would take you out behind the barn, Brother Denny, and deal with you. So, we need to thank the men and women of this great nation that have, in times past, made us free and continue to do so even to this day. So, independence is a, is a big deal. It's only in a, an American holiday. Uh, we celebrate it because we are independent. We are free. We do have liberty. Uh, now, you know, we're talking about Independence Day here today and, and, and having liberty. Now, we do have uh, liberty in that sense. We are free. But I want to talk to you about a little something different today. Not really different. I want to talk to you about your freedom from sin. Did you know you're not a slave to sin anymore? Did you know, and I'm sure you have, or you do know, that it also costs blood to make you free from that sin. Amen. It wasn't my blood or a soldier's blood. It was the precious blood of Jesus Christ to make you free from sin. So not only in America are, do we have uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, freedom, but we also have, and all around the world has, uh, the freedom of sin. Uh, we have liberty from the bondage of sin. Uh, you know, I'm going to uh, preach a little bit this morning. I was telling the folks before we started that I haven't been in the pulpit in about three weeks, and they better get ready. But um, you need to know this this morning, that we do, we do have liberty from sin. Now, am I saying it's okay for you to go out and kill somebody? No. Uh, am I saying it's okay for you to go out and commit adultery? No, I'm not saying that. But can you get forgiven for it? Number one, if you're truly sorry for it, and you ask God to forgive it through the precious blood of His Son, Jesus. I assure you, do not carry that sin with you anymore. If you've done those things and you meant it, it is forgiven as far as the East is from the West. And you know, uh, I've said this before, you can't get there from here, the East to the West, right? You can get to the North Pole, right, and the South Pole. You can't get from the east to the west. That sin no longer exists. Do not carry it around. But this morning, um, on Independence Day, I want to talk to us a little bit about a, a strange uh, piece of Scripture, but just beautiful the more you think about it. Because it, it reflects the character of God uh, here before us this morning. Uh, the uh, Scripture is in John chapter 8. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 11 this morning. And if you found your place there with me, I'd invite you to stand with me this morning 
in the honor of the reading of God's Word. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Uh, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So, when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself, lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Y'all pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we just pray this morning that you would open our ears and our eyes uh, to the truths of your word. Lord, we pray this morning that uh, you would enlighten us to the meaning of your word. And also, Lord, don't ever let us forget uh, that we are free from sin. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all can be seated. So we see here, <coughs> Jesus uh, Jesus had spent the night in the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and he taught them. So can you imagine, early in the morning, uh, I'm sure it was very early in the morning, and he sat down with the people, as was his custom. He sat down and he taught. Uh, you know, we, uh, we today, uh, we think we have to be in a classroom or a, or a uh, or some uh, structured place to sit down and teach. You can teach anywhere you are. Uh, the thing that we need uh, more and more is those willing to listen to us when we teach about God. But Jesus sat down early in the morning and he taught. It was his custom. He did it the whole time he was here. Um, <clears throat> and he, uh, but, but he taught. Uh, he taught the people. Uh, right there in the temple. Um, and uh, there's something I want you guys to resonate in your mind today as we talk about this. Is Are you free? Uh, are you free from the burden of sin? I, uh, I can't answer that question. If you're a child of God, I can tell you emphatically that you're absolutely free. He made you free. If we're not a child of God, I can tell you emphatically that you're under the burden of sin. You're under judgment uh, before Almighty God. We need to be careful and realize and ask ourselves the question today. Are you free from sin? Jesus, again, early in the morning, he's, he's teaching. And guess who appears? The scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus in the temple, very serene. Can you imagine being with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and hearing Him teach you personally. Can you imagine sitting there in that serene place listening, Miss Jewel, to your Lord teach you about what He wants you to learn? Can you imagine? What happens? The Sadducees and the Pharisees. You know, I, or the scribes and scribes and the Pharisees, excuse me. Uh, they come barging in. Well, you know, you may or may not know what a scribe and Pharisee is. We know that they attacked Jesus the whole time that he was here on earth. They plotted to kill him continually over and over and over again, right? 
Well, a scribe, okay, uh, they were the Jewish theologians of the day, right? They were uh, the experts in the interpretation of the Old Testament. Uh, it was a career. It was a job. They were the lawyers of the day. And I don't mean like you need a lawyer that defends you. I don't mean that kind of lawyer. I mean interpretation of the law of the Old Testament. That's what I mean. It was a career. It was a job. They did that continually. Now, you didn't necessarily need to be a scribe to be a Pharisee, uh, but there were scribes that were Pharisees. But the, the scribes, they were interpret, interpreters of the law. Okay? They, uh, they applied the law to the people of Israel. Um, and again, the Old Testament, right? Because the Old Testament man was still under what? He was under the law, right? He was under the burden of the law. I mean, you know that we can't live under there. I've talked to you about it many times. It's a burden too great for a simple man to bear. The Pharisees, now, they were, uh, that was a party, a movement of conservative Christians of the day. Well, they weren't Christians. A, 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 relig- a movement of religious people during the day. What were, they, uh, what were they moving toward? They wanted to make sure that the Old Testament was adhered to by the people. They were very zealous Okay, they uh, were they were called uh, they were set apart. Um, the Israelites of that day had had attempted to try to do kind of like what we've done. Although recently we've seen us move back toward the Lord, uh, very recently, uh, uh, but America was on a uh, definitely collision path with the Israelites. Don't think that uh, God won't judge America, folks. He judges chosen people. Why would you think you would be any better? And I'm pleased to see that we have moved back toward uh, the righteous way of God. But um, the Pharisees here, uh, they were uh, they were kind of uh, the Puritans, if you will, of the day. Uh, they wanted to see the law upheld, and uh, they were um, they were continually in the pursuit of uh, the uh, the law applying. To the Israelites of that day, that was they were a party, uh, they were a, a group of men, um, leaders, uh, religious leaders of the day. So now we see who uh, who uh, entered into the temple where Jesus was teaching. A bunch of lawyers, people that interpreted the law. Right? They when they when you read, "Thou shalt not kill." Okay, they were they were the guys that were interpreting what that meant. I mean, you ought to really know what that means. Don't kill anybody. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, You should really know what that meant. But we see here that that, those people are the people that came into the temple where Jesus is sitting and teaching uh, the Israelites about, about himself, really. He's teaching them about God. We need to understand that those people came for a reason. I want you to look here. I'm going to skip for just a minute. Over to 6, uh, they said this tempting him that they might have an act have to accuse him. So why were the, Sadduce- uh, the, the Pharisees and the scribes there? They were laying a trap for our Lord. Uh, don't get confused about what's going on here. Uh, he was teaching, in fact. But they... they orchestrated this entire thing to lay a trap for Jesus. Well, you might say, well, Brother Mark, who are they? We're talking about God in the place. We are. We are talking, and he's going to have a response for me on love. But uh, who would they Who would they have been able to accuse him to? Well, if you'll remember, and you studied the Bible at all, we'll know, you'll know that the uh, Israelites are under Roman occupation, right? Okay, in that, in that being said, the Romans got out of the way of conquered lands to a degree and let them govern their people until it came to one thing, capital punishment. They were not allowed to kill anyone. Well, Brother Mark, why in the world does that matter? Uh, We're not talking about killing anyone. Oh, yes, we are. Uh, The lady that's caught in adultery, 
Let me read for you a minute. Uh, back here in uh, Deuteronomy, it gives the, uh, the uh, sentence for this kind of behavior. And I know here in America, we kind of say things about adultery off the cuff. Well, you know what? It wasn't common then like it is now. And, and am I saying adultery is okay? No, I'm not. It is a definite sin. Uh, you're in sin. But look what the penalty was then. Um, uh, 22nd chapter of Deuteronomy. Uh, if, if, uh, uh, if a man uh, be found lying with a, 20, verse 22, with a woman married to an husband, then they both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel, uh, let me hear, um, if a damsel is a virgin betrothed to a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then you shall bring them both. Did you catch that? Both, both in both circumstances, out to the gate of the city, and you shall stone them with stones that they surely die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so that shalt, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. It's also in Leviticus. These, uh, these thing, these regulations and rules were the way that God governed His chosen people. The way that God, this is not a popular statement today, but you better hear me, governs His people even today. Adultery is still wrong. Murder is still wrong. God is mutable. He does not change. If it was wrong here, it's still wrong. Okay? <clears throat> Leviticus. Um... Mm, I lost my place here. And the man, uh, verse 10, uh, chapter 20, verse 10, And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Listen, this is Old Testament law. Now these scribes knew this. They came there loaded for bear. Okay, why are we talking about adultery? They came there loaded for bear to trap Jesus. That was the trap. To trap Jesus. Because if he said, stone him. Okay, if our Lord and Savior, he doesn't say that. If he said, stone him. Okay, what has he done? They're going to run to the Romans and say, look, he, is, he performed a capital murder case and killed a woman. Right? That's exactly the trap. If he said, don't do anything to her, he didn't say that either, uh, what has he done? Okay, he has violated the law of Moses. He has violated his own law uh, that was set down and given to Moses on Mount Sinai. Right? He has violated that. Okay, so they had Jesus, they think, they're not playing with God, y'all. They had Jesus in a trap, so to speak, right? They had him in a quandary. Here's this lady. She's caught Brother Denny in the act of, they say, in the act of adultery. I got a couple questions here, and the Bible doesn't tell us, and I know we probably shouldn't question, but where's the guy? Where's the man? Okay, I read to y'all in Deuteronomy, it said, the adulterer and the adulteress will be killed, right? Where's the guy? Again, a set-up trap. Uh, if it ever, if it even happened at all, she didn't say a word uh, to the end. If it even happened at all, uh, and you can see this, this travesty, this kangaroo court coming in. These people are sitting here tranquil, just like we are today. The only one hollering is me around here. Just like we are today, learning about God. He's in the flesh, right there in their midst. And they're just eating every word of it up, surely. Uh, I know I would. I'd love to sit down with him for a few hours. I'd probably be so convicted of running crazy. But I promise you, they are enamored with the Lord and Savior. When he spoke, people listened. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, God in the flesh. Why would you not listen? So the scene is tranquil. And somebody comes busting in the door, dragging a lady 
because she was resistant, dragging a lady, kicking and screaming in, and throws her down there beside of the Lord. God in the flesh has to see and hear this mess uh, and get distracted from what he was teaching, right? Or the people did. Jesus was never distracted. He was, um, he was absolutely perfect uh, when he taught or when he was doing anything else. But, uh, uh, but they dragged this lady in and they, and they, they brought, him, brought her unto him, a woman taken in adultery, And when they had set her in the midst, they say to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Okay, if you read that, that would lead you to believe these people, with their own eyes, at least two of them, Mosaic Law, takes two people to lay a charge, would have had to see her in the act of adultery. Caught in the very act. And then they uh, begin to lecture our Jesus on the law of Moses like he didn't know it, and like he hadn't laid it down in the beginning uh, to Moses. Uh, Look, they begin to lecture him. Now Moses in the law commanded us, that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Again, six, they said, uh, this they said, tempting him, that they might have accused him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. They want to lecture the Lord of glory, Brother Donnie, about the law of Moses. Somebody has got to straighten me out with these scribes and these Pharisees. Because I do not understand it. Why would you ever want to lecture or put God in a trap? Nonetheless, these ill-spoken individuals uh, decided they were going to lecture Jesus about the law of Moses. What does he do? He stoops down... And with his finger, he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now, there's been speculations about what he wrote on the ground. I've seen them all my life. The Bible doesn't say what he wrote, Miss Jewel. It does not say what he wrote on the ground. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know if he started writing my sins and the Pharisees' sins and uh, the scribes' sins. I don't know. It could have been anything on the ground. It does not tell us. I guess I really don't think we should speculate. But it just not. It doesn't tell us what he was writing. But as though he heard them not, what did he do? He ignored them. He didn't want to hear it. He did not want to hear it. So what do they do? They don't give up. So then they continued asking him. And he lifted himself up and said unto them, Oh, y'all better get this. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So did he say, Mom, did he say, Don't you stone her? That's not what he said. He said, If you don't have a sin, cast the first stone. Brilliant. Uh, Is he breaking the law in any way? No. No. The only one there that was without sin that could cast that stone was who? Jesus. The only one there that can cast that stone is Jesus. So are you free from sin today? If you have Jesus, you are. (laughs) If you don't have Jesus, somebody's going to hit you with a stone. Uh, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, after he makes this comment, what's he do? He stoops back down and he stops writing back in the sand of the temple floor. Again, we don't know what he's writing. I can't speculate. I I can only imagine. But I want you to see, I want you to see the reaction here in verse 9. And they which heard it, uh, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one. Beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. So what happens? The Lord of glory speaks, Brother Donnie, and conviction happens. These scribes and these Pharisees were not clean men. What was their intention when they came there? Uh, well, look back at verse 6. Uh, they said that they, uh, this they said, tempting him, that they might have an accu- have 
to accuse him. In other words, they wanted to lay a charge uh, with him, either with the Sanhedrin, saying that he violated uh, the Old Testament, or with the Romans, saying that he had a woman killed and done capital murder. Either way, Jesus was between the rock and the hard place. They just didn't know that they were with the rock. The rock of ages, they didn't know. Uh, but they were trying to trap him so, so hard. Uh, they were doing everything they could to lay a charge at Jesus. But he tells them, uh, <coughs> let, uh, uh, he is without sin among you. Let him cast the first stone at him. I used to work with an old boy. Let me tell you a little story. I used to work with an old boy. He won't, he won't mind me telling you who he is. You won't know him anyway. His name's Perry White. And we'd be debating or arguing about something somebody done at the shop. And he'd look at me and he'd say, Well, Mark, you want to buy, borrow my stone or you bring your own? You know, the believer today needs to take into account what Jesus said to these scribes and these Pharisees. You know, it's not always time to stone someone. And we need to be careful. Uh, we need to be careful and make sure we're without sin when we're dealing with them. And you know, the Bible lays down uh, clear instructions for somebody that is in sin in the church uh, and how we're uh, to deal with them. But I'm telling you, uh, whoever is dealing with them need to go by what Jesus is saying here. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. We need to make sure that we're clean and not doing the same thing. Uh, that uh, they're doing. And I know I've... Um, but uh, Perry was a, a, a different kind of guy. I liked him a lot. And uh, he, he would tell me, you want to borrow my stone or have you brought your own? So uh, I think we'd do wise, be wise to think that way. Do you want to use my stone? <laughs> or have you brought your own? <laughs> wow. But... Um, <coughs> But again, their conscience gets to them. Uh, when you're confronted with the supernatural or when you're confronted with Christ, I promise you, you're going to be like Peter. Leave me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. These Pharisees and these scribes were not on the side of Jesus. Okay? They were not His disciples. Believe me when I tell you they were convicted. Uh, you cannot be in the presence of Jesus and not be convicted. And I was talking about Peter. He said, leave me. I'm a sinful man. Now think about someone that does not know God. Think about how convicted Miss Janice they would be. It would be bad. Again, we see exactly what happens uh, when God's Word uh, comes out. Uh, it has an effect. It has an effect here. It has an effect any time His Word is spoken. It will not ever return void. Clearly it didn't hear, did it? Uh, what happened? And they which heard it, uh, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. What happens? All our accusers run away. They've all got sin. They've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know, uh, we use the Scripture a lot, Romans, uh, all, all means all, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, these men have sinned and come sure, way short of His glory. Not only that, they were trying to kill the Lord of glory. <clears throat> when Jesus had lifted Himself up and saw none but the woman, He said unto her, <laughs> Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? So finally he addresses the woman that apparently was caught in, in the act of, uh, of adultery. Uh, we see that he does not, um, he does not uh, at this point, he does not uh, cut her loose, right? Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? She finally speaks. Out of this whole interrogation, this is the first time Scripture records a, a word from her. And she's talking to Jesus. She said in 11, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So does Jesus say, 
I don't condemn you. Get out of here. He doesn't say that. Uh, he does not condemn her. And again, he was the only one there that could condemn her. He was the only one there that could condemn her. The only one. The only one here that can condemn you. Please say, all authority is given me in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. All authority. You know, we need to understand that He is the Lord of glory. He's the Lord of lords, King of kings. Uh, there's no one higher uh, that is going to have anything to do with your judgment. Uh, he's going to judge the earth. Uh, uh, God's going to judge it by Him. He is going, uh, he is going to sit there and, uh, and judge the earth. But He doesn't make light of sin. So clearly He's not negating the Old Testament uh, about adultery. But what He is doing here is He's giving liberty. And on, and on Independence Day, He has gave liberty from sin. Uh, she, she is uh, forgiven for that sin. But look at the condition. Go. No words leave. And sin no more. In other words, she was not to stay, not to stay in that adulterous relationship, was she? She was not to continue in that sin. Uh, you and I today, we sin, right? Y'all have sin. Is there anybody here that has sinned? I'm just checking I want to meet a sinlessly perfect person, Brother Donnie. You raise your hand. Ah, here. Uh, I want to meet one of them sinlessly perfect people. Uh, but uh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, does it mean you stop sinning? <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I try to fight the good fight, but you know, invariably... Invariably, God is going to expose more and more sin that's in your life. And your job, is through Him, is to continue to get away from that and get more toward Christ and less toward Satan. So, you're to eschew evil. You're to flee from evil. Uh, you're not to be holding it. She was not to go back to her adulterous lifestyle. She was to clean up her life. She was not to sin. What do you say? Jesus. Red words. Uh, they, uh, uh, neither do I condemn thee. Okay? She's not condemned. Go and sin no more. It don't just say that she's not committed adultery, although we know that's a sin. But there's many other sins. He says sin no more. Clean your life up, lady. Repent and clean your life up. Stop it. Uh, that's what repent means. It means turn from it. Stop it. Don't do it anymore. Uh, we're to clean our lives up. We're to be more Christ-like everyday Christian. The hour is late. Uh, uh, the Bible says it'll be as in the times of Noah right before he comes back. If uh, Noah lived in a time much more sinful than now, than we see around us every day, read the newspaper, you don't believe me, then that must have been a wicked place, Miss Jewel. I'm telling y'all, the hour is late. And I want to ask you a question. Are you free from the burden of sin today? And if the answer is no, Brother Mark, uh, I'm still under my sin. I'm dead in my sins and trespasses. Let me tell you about a person that can save you from that burden of sin. He can give you liberty, just like he did this lady here, caught in the act of adultery. He can give you liberty uh, from your sin, freedom from your sin. Uh, and that's no one but Jesus. Uh, heaven is not for sale. There's only one way there. Muhammad won't get it done. Buddha won't get it done. Those people are dead in the ground. Uh, I promise you, there's only one way into heaven. Jesus says, no man comes into the Father but by me. That comes straight out of the lips of my Savior and yours. And I know we're late on time, Brother Donnie. Deal with it. That comes straight out of Jesus' lips. No man comes into the Father. No man but by me. What do you do with that Scripture, folks? Jesus is the only way. And here, clearly, He grants this woman that's in one of the most grievous sins. Think about it. It's adultery. It's in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not murder. Don't tell me. Don't tell me for one second you can't get forgiveness for your sins. It's not true. You might want to stand before a righteous God and say, God, I can explain why I committed adultery. 
Well, God, I can explain why I lied. What he's going to do is say, you died without my son. Depart, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And he's going to send you straight to hell. And I, I, I tell you that today, not because I want to shock you, but know this, your families and my families are at risk. If you die in your sin without Christ, if you draw your last breath, listen to me, there is no do-over. You can't claim ignorance. What did he say? I put enough light in the world. I put enough light in the creation to let you know that I am God. He put enough light around you in just the created world to let you know that there is a God. We cannot die not knowing Jesus. If you do, the sentence is simple. You're going to depart for that place called hell. You're going to be tormented day and night, Victoria. You're going to be uh, burnt until the smoke uh, rises up forever and ever. I don't know how far that is. That's a long way, though, I would say. Uh, we need to understand that our families uh, are not promised another hour. It is important today to make sure they have liberty from sin. They have freedom from sin. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. That which was lost was you and I. I pray today, uh, I pray today uh, that everyone in the sound of my voice uh, has accepted Him as their personal Savior. If you haven't, uh, look, He paid for the sin on the cross with every drop of blood. Are you free from sin today? Uh, he, he paid that debt. He paid that penalty for you and I. All we have to do is tell Him that, Lord, I know I need a Savior. I'm in sin. I've realized uh, I've been convicted in my heart that I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. You say, Brother Mark, I don't know what kind of sin you're talking about. Bear with me for a few minutes here. Have you ever told a lie? Guess what? You're guilty in the eyes of God of sin. You ever looked on a... Well, Brother Mark, I never lied. You ever looked on a woman in lust or a man? Guess what? You're guilty. You're guilty of sin before God. Have you ever had an adulterous affair? Guess what? You're guilty uh, before God. A righteous, holy God. You're guilty. Okay? So that just guilt right there. Uh, you won't be able to lie there when you get there. He's going to judge you on what you've done. Uh, that will send you to hell. That rates hell. You come short of His glory. Um, so the only way for you and I is that we have a substitutionary death which is Jesus, that dies in our place and pays that penalty for my sin and yours. That is the only way uh, that we can go to heaven. Again, Muhammad can't get it done. He was a sinful man. How do you know that, Brother Mark? You didn't know him. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. What does that mean? They've all sinned. Everyone but Jesus. He died. He was just. He died for the unjust, for you and I. Know this. Know this, if you die without Christ, you go to hell. Uh, don't let anyone drag you there. Mom, Dad, get your life right. Don't split hell, which would be bad enough on its own. Don't split hell wide open. In torment, in fire, and look around and see your son, your daughter, your granddaughter, your grandson, and they look at you and say, Mom, Grandpa, Grandma, I followed you here. Don't do that. You know, the free gift of salvation is here. It's free to you and me. It costs Christ everything. He had to bleed, bleed and die the death on the cross. Humiliation. Uh, he had the sins of the world poured out upon Him on the cross at Calvary. He died for you and me. All you have to do is the simplest thing you'll ever do in your life. You've got to tell God that, and agree with God. And we've proved here today that you are a sinner. You have sinned and come short of his glory. Again, a white lie will do. A white lie will do. You've got to agree with him that you sin and come short of his glory. You've got to ask, ask God to let Jesus be the Lord and Savior of your life. You've got to agree with God that he raised him on the third day to show his acceptance for Christ's payment of sin on your behalf. And then you've got to make Jesus your Lord 
and Savior. You just can't have fire insurance. You can't have just the fire insurance. He's got to be your Savior. You, know, you have to have a relationship with Christ. You know, we need to understand and we need to ask Him into our life today to save us from this sin. Americans have liberty. But do they have freedom from sin? Do they have liberty from sin? I would be uh, surprised if more than 30% of the people in the United States have liberty from sin. What are you saying, Brother Mark? I'm saying 70% at least are lost. Does that put it in the proper perspective? I know you know people in your family that don't know Christ. Well, Brother Mark, I don't know. Well, you're not called to judge them, but you are called to inspect the fruit. What kind of fruit's in their life? Are they living for the Lord? Or are they living for self? You know, again, uh, salvation is the simplest thing in the world for you and I. God didn't make it complicated. Jesus did not make it complicated. You don't have to have a theological degree to be saved. What you have to have is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to, again, admit to your sinner. Agree with God you've sinned. Repent. Turn away from that sin. Agree with God that He raised Christ on the third day. Ask Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you've done these things today, please, please do these things. He'll change your life. I'm not saying it's going to be roses and, and million dollar cars. But I am saying that He'll change your life. And I am saying He'll make a reservation for you in that place called heaven. He'll build you a mansion there. He'll be there with you throughout eternity. Uh, don't ever think as a Christian, whatever you do, He's not going to do tenfold. It says He'll open the windows of heaven, windows of heaven and pour blessings out upon you. I promise my goodness, I promise. Don't ever think what you're doing here. If you are living a defeated life, brother, don't, don't be defeated. I've read the book. We win in the end, Denny. Uh, we win in the end. We're going to be forever with Christ in that place called heaven. We're going to live with Him throughout eternity there. Throughout eternity. I don't know how long that is. That's going to be an awful long time, though. We can't measure it. Isn't that great? But again, if you don't have freedom from sin, today's that day. Now is the appointed hour. Today is the appointed time to accept Christ as your personal Savior. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Don't. If you're on the Internet and you've uh, accepted Christ, please email me. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to have a little bit of correspondence with you. And uh, we would love to help you on your journey uh, with Jesus. With Jesus. Uh, so again, today, thank a soldier. Thank a soldier for your freedom. And don't ever forget that you are free because of the blood of those men. And then, on the other hand, if you're a Christian today, you need to get on, the low, get on your knees and thank the Lord for your freedom, your liberty from sin. Y'all stand with me. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you uh, we come before you today and we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you that we do have liberty. We have freedom from sin itself. Lord, I just thank you for that. I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for the souls that you saved around me. Lord, I pray that you would work mightily in their life. I pray that you would continue to pour your grace out upon us all. Lord, we pray that everyone would be safe during this holiday. And Lord, we pray that we would all if we have an opportunity to witness to a lost soul, step through that door and tell them about the one that loves us the most. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.